By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a game uh, between Pink Weenie against a Twiddle Vault. And before I start with showing you the actual game, I would first like to explain to you how the deck Twiddle Vault works. So let's first look at the card Time Vault. It's one of the big, it's one of the two combo pieces in the deck. And Time Vault is two mana, it's an artifact, and it says tap to gain an additional turn after the current one. Time Vault doesn't untap normally during untap phase. To untap it, you must skip a turn. Time Vault begins tapped. So it comes into play tapped. If you want to untap it, you have to give your opponent an extra turn. Now there's the card Twiddle, the other piece of the combo. And Twiddle reads, caster may tap or untap any one land, creature or artifact in play. No effects are generated by the target card. So uh, in other words, you can Twiddle your Time Vault and then you can take an extra turn without giving another turn to your opponent. Now this is a nice combo in itself. Um, but what you need to do is you need to put cards in your deck that will ensure that you can cast Twiddle multiple times and that you can quickly find your Time Vault. So there is a Transmute Artifact in this deck that helps you to look up Time Vault. There are Howling Mines in this deck so that you can go quicker through your uh, deck. There are Sylvan Libraries in this deck so you can kind of sort your cards. But there is also a Regrowth in this deck so you can get your Twiddle back or your Time Vault back when it's removed. There is also a Demonic Tutor in this deck that helps you search for the pieces you need for your combo. But an interesting thing here is that also the card Recall is in this deck. And Recall used to be a restricted card. Now it has been, uh, now it's unrestricted, meaning you can play with four of them. And I think Twiddle Vault is one of those decks that actually became a lot better since this um, unbanning, unrestricting, I guess you should say, because now you can play four. So that means that you can get the Time Vaults and the Twiddles back easier than before. Now in this game we're going to see if that's really the case or not. I'm playing with a not a very special deck, Pink Weenie. I'm kind of trying to make it more mid-rangey and we'll see how that works out for me. For now, let's go to the first game. Game number one and I believe I'm on the play here and there I go and there's a Zavan Alliance on the field so that's a great start for my deck. There is a Volcanic Island and a Mana Vault in that uh, Howling Mine that Anna is using to find his key cards here. And there is a White Knight as a follow-up. So again, a very good turn for me. Of course, that Howling Mine is great because I play a lot of cheap creatures in this deck. And we're kind of talking about, you know, how to stack up the damage. And I learned actually that Mana Vault deals damage not in your upkeep, but in your draw step. I didn't know that. So it's quite interesting. So you always keep, keep learning new things in old school. That's what I find so interesting. Every phase in old school is still very important when I compare it to like the, the different uh, environments, like the standard environment where upkeep doesn't really play a role. There's a library of Alexandria, and as you can see, Anna is showing me how many cards he still has in hand, six cards. I'm attacking here for four. Putting down a card, and I have to pass turn here, so that's not ideal. Missing a three drop here. But Anna is already on 12 and of course also taking the damage from the Mana Vault. And there's the first Twiddle. But not on a Time Vault, but on his Mana Vault. And I'm responding here. Playing a Disenchant over his uh, Mana Vault in response. And he is activating his Library of Alexandria to draw an extra card. So I don't want to give him the Mana to kind of play out his threats. I wonder if this is the right tactic. I mean, it seems to be at the time, but maybe you should just keep your disenchants for his time vaults because those are his key pieces. Um, attack for four again. He's on eight. And there's a stone rain taking care of his library of Alexandria here. I mean, he's already drawing a lot of cards with the Howling Mine, but in this case it works double because you take care of the library that he can use to draw extra cards, but in this case it also is a mana source that you take care of. He only has one, one land, he's on eight. So I need two more swings with the creatures I have right now. But I believe he also plays a balance in this deck. 
He's actually discarding a card here. So he's discarding a Disenchant and a Mana Vault. And this is looking good for me. I'm still on 20. He has one land. So what can happen here? He's going to four. I'm playing a Janum Tome. Not really what you hope for. You hope for to put some more pressure on the board. And Anna's drawing more cards. He's playing a balance. I just I just discussed this card. And <laughs> he's actually playing it. Um, wow, this is really a blow. Because um, he's on four. And I wonder if I have any more fuel in my hand here. And okay, I'm playing another Savannah Lines, so that's good, that can help. And maybe I can find a Lightning Bolt with an attack of the Savannah Lines, and that would be enough to win this game. And he's on four life, so it's interesting. But now he has some mana, and oh no, there's a Time Vault taking a damage, and this is turn number one. So his first turn, I'm just going to write this down to see if I can if, if I can follow it. So this is his first extra turn, taking a new turn, playing a Regrowth, probably on his Twiddle, he, and taking another extra turn. So this is turn number two, playing a Tropical Island, playing a Sylvan Library. And another extra turn. This is turn number three. So remember, he's on three, uh, two life even. You can see there. So if I have a lightning bolt, I can kill him. But I don't, or else I would have played it. And he has the Sylvan on the field now. So that means that he can look at the top four cards because of the Howling Mine as well. And he can put the top four cards in order. He cannot draw an extra card anymore, obviously, because he's on two. And there's another Twiddle. So that's turn number four that he's going in. I mean, this is just crazy. I almost killed him here, but, and there's a recall. We talked about recall a little bit at the uh, start of the movie, and he's bringing back two twiddles, and he's probably playing with four recalls. Actually, I know he is. Now he's taking his extra turn, looking at the top four cards, drawing here, and he's taking turn number five. So he's really going off here. And I'm still on 20. I mean, all I need is one more turn to finish him off. But am I getting that extra turn? And I think this really shows the power of Twiddle Vault here. Playing a Mox Sapphire and again another Twiddle because he took two back with the recall earlier. So this is turn number six that he's going in. Drawing the cards. Well, actually, looking at the cards, putting them in order, drawing two cards. And one of the cards that I didn't mention yet was Time Twister, which is also a great card here because you can shuffle your whole library back. There's another recall. Again, taking two Twiddles back. And this shows you how crazy good the recall is in this case. Going to turn number seven. And I think he's speeding up here a little bit. But I'm still going to try to keep up with the turn. So he's on turn number seven. And he's twiddling again. So he's going to have turn number eight. And putting down some mocks and taking a time walk. Of course, that's the traditional way of taking an extra turn. So that's turn, turn number nine. You would almost forget that you, of course, you have time walk as well. Turn number nine. And usually I would have scooped already, but now for the game, I just want to, want, want to see how this works. How is this going to go through? How is he actually going to kill me? Because that's what I'm curious about at this point. So he's taken nine turns in a row, nine turns in a row, and he's playing another recall for two cards. And you actually see him putting his twister in the bin. That's an interesting choice. Oh, I, I remember why he, he, yeah, and now he's taking turn number 10. The choice is he said, if I play a twister, I let you draw seven new cards, and then you may find a lightning bolt, and you can burn me and you win the game. So he told me I'm not going to use the time twister for that. So that's smart. That's good thinking there. 
and let's see he's taken 10 turns in a row 10 turns in a row but i'm still on 20 and he still got my line so hey there's a time vault tapping the time vault getting three mana and he's playing a transmute artifact i love that combination of tapping the time vault and playing transmute mirror universe of course fantastic a mirror universe so he's probably gonna kind of swap lives. Mirror Universe is a legend card for six, and it says in your upkeep you can sacrifice it to swap the lives. And there's a twiddle taking turn number eleven. So that means he's gonna go in an extra turn, and in his upkeep he can activate Mirror Universe, switch our life totals. So he's on twenty, and I'm on two. I was so close to winning. I was so close. Anyway, turn number eleven. Uh, and I think if he has a fireball of two or whatever he has, I mean, he can kill me quite easily. And he's taking two extra cards. Why not? He's got life now. So he's actually drawing four cards. Um, and let's see what's going to happen. He's taking a damage and there's a huge fireball and uh, that's end game. And I'm showing him that I can still source my lions to gain some extra life, but it's not going to be enough. And what a match. So it looked like I was going to have an easy victory here, but in the end I lost. Let's go to game number two. Game number two. So I was so close yet so far because I lost there in the end. At least I get to start now. So let's see what I can do. Maybe make it 1-1 and get that third game in there. And he's taking a mulligan. And let's look at his hand. Wow, a mulligan with a library in hand. But he told me this is just not good enough for the total fold deck. This is not what I need. Way too many lands. And he's reshuffling it again. It's interesting, like with these combo decks, I feel like you really have to invest time to really understand how they work. Um, I once played with a stasis deck at a tournament and really underestimated the difficulty of playing stasis. Um, so I, I, I really feel that if you want to play a combo deck well, you need to invest a lot of time into learning to play with it properly. Um, and I know that Anna has put a lot of time and effort into into his deck into perfecting it and you can see that in game one where he took 11 turns in a row and killed me so man <clears throat> you know when he says I take a mulligan I trust him to make the, the right decision there uh, anyway back to the game I've started here with his Havana lines hit him for two and then able to do a lightning bolt so he's down on 15 and also have that uh, Mishra's Factory that I can activate. Choose not to. Play a second city in a city of brass. And he's going down to 13. We didn't sideboard, by the way. We just decided to play three games with no sideboarding. And just just kind of to, to have a look, like, how does this Twiddle of Old deck works? Uh, work, just in general. Um, so untapping my lines, drawing two cards again. Attacking. Down to 11. Discarding his swords, and I believe what I'm doing here is I'm holding a uh, disenchant back because as soon as he plays a twiddle, uh, or I mean a time vault, I want to be able to disenchant the time vault immediately. And let's see what he's going to do. So he's found his library of Alexandria again. So he has some card advantage going on. And I play a mountain, and now I have the mana available to end attack with my factory and being able to keep that disenchant behind, you know, playing it if it's necessary. So he's going down on seven. And I was actually telling him in the game, I said, you know, after that game, seeing that you can just get 11 turns out of nowhere and kill me, um, I'm, I'm going to play differently. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm keeping that disenchant uh, in case he plays that time vault. Not sure if that's the right move to do. But that's a choice I've made. He's on seven now. And he's playing a mana vault. And he's playing a mirror universe. So he's kind of forcing my hand here. Now I'll have to use my disenchant. Not necessarily now, but I think best the best thing to do is using it on his end step so I have my mana available. Taking two damage here, yeah, and there it is. There's the disenchant. Taking care of his mirror universe, I have to, but this does mean that I can feel the pressure if I have to kill him now. If he has his combo in his hand, 
I believe I'm toast. So that's a lot of pressure because he's on seven. I can only hit him for four. And I actually have a Sarah Angel in hand. But I can't even play that out. And I'm choosing to... Well, I can, but I'm choosing to hit him here for four. So he's on three life. And again, I'm missing that lightning bolt to finish, finish the job here. Drawing an extra card. And he's drawing so many cards and he has so much mana also with those um, mana volts there. So I'm really hoping that he cannot get his um, combo going. Tapping the volt. Playing a transmute. Uh-oh. So there we go. I only playing it on a Chaos Orb. So I guess that means that he doesn't have a Twiddle in his hand. Or else he would have made a different choice. So he's probably going to flip. Let's see. And that little dice you see over there, the other dice that says one, is kind of showing the mana he still has from the mana vault that he tapped earlier. And he's going to flip. And that's it. So he's he's hit my factory. Passing turn. I got a lines. And can I kill him now? Because the lines deals two damage. That's not enough. Playing another City of Brass. Attacking here. It's going to one. Can I finish the game? And there's a fireball for two. And that's it. I'm winning the second game. So we're going to have a game number three. I feel very lucky here to be able to play it again number three. And let's see who's going to win this matchup. Game number three. So it's uh, on, on the play for this decisive game against this exciting deck Twiddlefold. And maybe uh, you recognize the name Anna because you've seen him before on the channel and then he was playing uh, with this All Hallows Eve deck. So I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to see, or in the comments below if you'd like to see that game. There's a recall turn one and I have a very interesting, well, very exciting opening for me at least, a double Savannah Lines there, but also the recall there for Anna. So his hand is chocked full of spells. Let's see what's gonna happen. Playing a Mox Sapphire here. Um, seeming to think what to do next. And there's a Mana Vault. A Howly Mine. And <laughs> playing a Balance. Oh my goodness. That was the worst thing that could happen for me. I was I was thinking that in the back of my head. But I'm like, okay, it only has one Balance in the deck. I mean, what are the odds? I just got to play the two lines here. And playing another line. So that's good. Lines number three. So they were stacked up there for me. And playing a disenchant on his howling mine, and again, this is something I wouldn't have done uh, in the early games. But after playing two games against Twiddlevolt, seeing how important card draw is for this deck, so he can draw into uh, into his combos and kind of get this situation going. There's a Twiddle on his mana vault, and ah, and you see, he has so many ways to draw cards. It seems, and so I was using a brain geyser. He's already used an ancestral recall. That means six extra cards compared to what I'm drawing, and also, of course, the card advantage with taking care of the two Savannah lines. So I'm playing a City of Brass here. And I can't seem to find my four drops. Passing turn here and on this taking damage from the Vault. Playing a Soul Ring. Playing a City. And he just has so many cards in hand and, and that City of Brass is great giving him all the colored mana he needs. There's a Sylvan Library taking an extra turn with the Time Walk. And this is not looking good for me. So I'm disenchanting the Sylvan here. He's kind of forcing my hand because now I've already lost two uh, disenchants. And I'm not sure if this was the right decision. Maybe I, I should have kept the disenchant for a possible Time Vault again. And there is that recall. Probably going to get the Ancestral back or the Time Walk. Yeah, that's it. That's the Ancestral. Gonna play it out, and you see how much mana he has. So he can just play out all those spells. And taking a damage. 
playing a new silver library and this is uh this is pretty frustrating for me because i just invested a lot of disenchants to take care of that and and now there's a second sylvan and you know how important my disenchants are against this uh this particular deck and he's going to 10 now But 10, I'm still so far away. At least I've got five mana, so I wonder if I have like a Sarah Angel or something in my hand that I can put on the board next turn. If there's going to be a next turn. It's going to six here. Playing a Howling Mine. Playing a Transmute Artifact. And there it is. And I'm quite sure we're going to have a Twiddle. And there's a twiddle. So that's actually uh, the first extra turn he's taking, I, I guess. At least off this time vault. And he's on six. And this really reminds me of that first game of this matchup. Uh, where he was, I believe, on four. And then he went back to two with his cities. And there's a demonic tutor. So he has so many cards to kind of go through his library and find his key pieces. And I wonder if he's going to get back a, um, a recall now to get double twiddle back. Although I'm not sure if there are two twiddles. I, yeah, there are two twiddles in his graveyard. I wonder if he does that or does something else. And with these decks, the sequencing of your spells is so important. So he chooses to play a regrowth. He plays a twiddle. Obviously going to use it. Twiddle it. An extra turn. Turn number two. Playing a transmute artifact, <laughs> another another uh, howling mine. Also showing how important howling mines are for the for these decks. And you see that more with combo decks that howling mines are key pieces. Um, and one of the things I like is that um, when you see your opponent playing with howling mines and and letting you draw, it probably means that despite the fact they're giving you card advantage, they have an even bigger advantage. And that's one of the reasons why I disenchanted that first howling mine. And actually, this is end game. I'm saying, hey, man, you've won. We've seen this in game one. It's fantastic. You're already on your, on your second or third extra turn, whatever. And he's showing me his hand with the recall and a double twiddle. So uh, that's fantastic. Congratulations, Anna. And what a beautiful deck you've built. The, uh, the twiddle fold deck showing the power of that unrestricting of recall. And uh, obviously, my pink weenie deck needs some tweaking as well. As you can see, I missed a lot of four drops there. Um, anyway... Congratulations, Honor, for winning this and for showing us uh, Twiddle Vault. Very nice, very cool deck. If you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the playlists that are appearing right now. For now, thank you for watching the uh, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. <laughs>